Step two, once you've got that interesting idea or interesting product, so if, if you're that 10th online backup provider, somehow you've got to find an edge on that that's re very remarkable and unique, and you have to start blogging and creating content and creating videos and creating all sorts of interesting content around that idea. The people who win on the internet are people who create lots and lots of remarkable content. So if you search on Google, for example, you see that Wikipedia ranks number one for like half the terms on the internet today because they have remarkable, interesting, authoritative content on that topic. So as a marketer, as an entrepreneur, you want to think that you're half marketer, half publisher. You've got to kind of think like a publisher today, and you need to turn your company into a content creation factory. If you're the VP of sales, you need to get back to your office and, and go to your marketing guy. So you need to start a blog today. The blog's got to kick ass. We need to start creating a TV show. Once a week, you want to put a TV show on. We need to start doing webinars and presentations and ebooks and just create content like crazy. What's interesting about all that content, so let's take a blog. If I start a blog today and I push out an article, that article sits in the internet. If it's interesting or remarkable, other people will link to that article, right? Those links will send me traffic. Those links inform Google it's important and move up in the rankings. That article can move through the internet on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn. That next day I write another article, same thing happens, and then another article, another article. Each one of these articles, it's like compounding interest on the internet. It just keeps building and building and building, as opposed to sort of doing advertising where month after month you're kind of throwing good money after bad. So all this content, each piece of content is like a magnet for links, it's like a magnet for Google, it's like a magnet for the social media sphere. So you want to get as much good, remarkable content out there as you can, because each little piece of content pulls people in, and then you pull them into your funnel. Everybody cool with me on that? Got to create tons of content. Who knows what this is? It's actually a picture of the internet. This is what the internet actually looks like. Each dot on on here is a website. Okay, and these are most websites. They're out on the edge of the internet, and each line between the dot, that's a link. Links are to the internet as sort of the U.S. dollar is to the U.S. economy. You want Lots of other websites remarking about your website by linking back to it. Everybody know what a link is? Okay. So what you want to do when you're business, when you get back to work tomorrow, is you're probably here. If you showed up here today, you're probably on the edge, and you want to start moving into the center, and you want to be one of these big white dots with millions of people linking at. In order to do that, you need to have a remarkable product. You can't be that 10th backup storage company. You need to be the 10th backup storage company with some blah, 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 very interesting angle. And you need to create lots of content because each of those pieces of content attracts links. And each of one of those links that sends you traffic, each one of those links moves you up in Google, each one of those links potentially spreads in, in Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn. Everybody with me? So the way to think about it is I grew up in Westwood, Massachusetts. And Westwood, Massachusetts has Route 128 goes through it, and it has a big-ass train station, Route 128 station. When I compare Westwood, Massachusetts to the dreaded New York City, New York City's got three huge airports. New York City's got a couple big bus stations. It's got a bunch of big train stations and thousands of highways coming out of it. You want your company's website to be a lot more like New York City than you do like Westwood, Massachusetts. Every one of those highways going into New York City, those are like links from other websites. Those bus stations are like Twitter. Those train stations are like Facebook. Those airports are like LinkedIn. You want to become a hub on the internet. And so you need to create lots of interesting content to turn your website into a hub. You want your business to be a little bit like a Forrester website or an IDC website where you're creating lots of content around your industry. So let's talk a little bit about Google for a second and how, how you rank on Google. So the, the two founders of Google, Sergi and, uh, and Page, they were PhD students at Stanford. And what they were trying to do in their PhD thesis was to come up with a better way to categorize the internet than Yahoo. And Yahoo made these lists of sites, basically. And because they were working on their PhD, they were thinking about how the PhD thesis sort of works. So if you're Albert Einstein and you write a PhD thesis, everybody else who wrote a thesis in physics post-Albert Einstein, in the footnotes of their thesis, would refer back to little old Albert's thesis. So they're, re they're building on his work. And they said, you know, we're trying to get our PhDs, and we want other people to build on our works. So why don't we categorize the internet by sort of saying, other people who build on our work on our website are, are essentially, it's like a PhD thesis, who are linking back to us 
that's a measure of authority, just like a PhD thesis. So the more people who link to your website, the more authority you have. And the more powerful people who link to your website, the more uh, authority you have. So if the New York Times links to your website, it's worth a lot more than your sister's gardening blog linking back to your website. And that's essentially why Google's so successful, because they copied that um, sort of PhD algorithm to categorize the internet. So you need to be very careful of these SEO. There's a lot of hucksters out there. So what you don't want to do is somebody comes up to you and says, I'll give you a link if you give me a link back. Because what Google does is it figures that out. And so it looks and says, you have 1,000 links. 500 of the links into your website are reciprocal. The other 500 aren't. We're going to discount your authority because we think you're cheating the system. So Google, over time, has gotten very good at, at figuring out the funny games that people play. So you need to be careful. The only way to really win is hard work. There's no free lunch on the internet anymore because Google's gotten so, really so good at figuring all that crap out. Okay, so step one's a remarkable strategy. Step two is lots and lots of great content. Step three is optimize that content for Google. So let's say I were writing a blog article. Which is the better of the two titles? It's the first one, actually. And the reason it's the first one is, think, of, think about when you're reading the Boston Globe. You fold the paper open. You're on page two of the sports section, page three of the sports section, and there's 12 or 13 different articles. Your eyes just quickly go over it, and you pick the one or two that are interesting, and you read them. That's sort of how it works in the Internet. That's how it works as you're reading your RSS reader, you're reading in Twitter, you're reading in Facebook. So you want your article to really pop because you want people to link on it. This just isn't that interesting. I don't care what Colleen's Tuesday morning thoughts are. Colleen's one of our engineers at HubSpot, so this could have been an article she wrote, but instead she made it this title. She's an Olympic gold medalist in hockey, and this became one of our most popular articles in HubSpot. So as you become sort of a content creator, you need to be very good at writing your titles, it turns out. So there's a bunch of new skills you need to acquire to be a modern sort of marketer today. You have to be part publisher, actually. And so this article really took off. The other reason this is good is because the article title for HubSpot has the word marketing tips in it. So when people search for marketing tips, we want to rank number one. We don't really want to rank number one for Colleen's Tuesday. You know, we don't care about that kind of thing. But when people are searching on marketing tips, we want to be found. So first, you've got to have a remarkable product. Second, you've got to create lots of content around it. Third, you need to optimize it for Google. So if you haven't done this, and many people probably have, go back to your whole website, and you need to optimize every page on it because each page on that website has an opportunity to rank in Google. You need to go back and do that. If you need some help doing that, go to a site called WebsiteGrader.com. It's free. Okay, so step one, great strategy. Step two, lots of content. Step three is optimize all that content. Step four is if you, if you spend Sunday afternoon writing a great blog article, you want to pimp the crap out of that article. You want everybody and their brother to read it. And the way you pimp it, the way you get it to spread virally, is you want to make sure people in Twitter find it, people in StumbleUpon, YouTube, Flickr, LinkedIn, Facebook, you want to really push it out. So as entrepreneurs, as sales folks, as marketing folks, you need to get very familiar with these sites, and you need to be able to really push your content out through it. So the idea is create the content, optimize it, and then promote it through the social media sphere and get some widespread distribution. And that, that content pulls people in. Yes, sir? Any one of those social networks that you see work better than another? Or? It, it, it's a little bit industry dependent. Um, your network depending too. It is. Sort of Facebook and Twitter are, have worked extremely well for us and work really well for our customers. So it, with, with, when it comes to Twitter, you probably want your own profile. So I have at B. Halligan on Twitter. And then we have at HubSpot on Twitter. And we acquire followers. So at B. Halligan has 4,000 followers. At HubSpot has 28,000 followers. What's really interesting about that is every time you write a new blog article, we push it out to all my 4,000 followers. We push it out to the 28,000 HubSpot followers. And then if people like the article, they'll retweet it. And boy, does it spread like wildfire. So our blog has a reach of about 25,000 subscribers. Plus, you add on top of those subscribers the extra 4,000 Twitter followers and 25,000 Twitter followers for myself and for, um, for at HubSpot. And our reach becomes very, very big. So this is sort of a new way to think about your marketing database. It used to be your email list. Now it's how many email addresses do I have, how many Twitter followers, how many Facebook fans, how many LinkedIn group members.